Hey guys, it's Chris and Brian with work to game and today we're going to talk a little bit about net neutrality. It's been a big topic lately and honestly we're not going to dive too much into kind of what it is or or what all exactly changed because it's right. a big list and this guy has changed a lot of things in his first 11 months in tenure um, and we're mostly focused on what does this mean for gaming. Right. Obviously, being a gaming channel, this makes sense as far as the topic. And so I, I, Chris and I had a conversation, and it was actually heated because uh, the thing is, at the end of the day, like we both agree that the Internet should be a utility. In fact, I think there should be a free Internet uh, because I see it as a big gap in wealth right now, in, especially in America. Right. So that's where we are. We're actually I based in Texas. And, uh, right, because you can literally use the Internet to teach yourself any kind of skill. And actually, you know, when you when you're at home, let's say you're working and you know working a minimum wage job, and you can't afford to go to a, a trade school or a university, there like the only thing that stops you if you have the internet and a device that obviously works with the internet is literally yourself. Like it is all up to you because you can go learn any kind of skill. From that perspective, then you can you'll need certifications. That's a bigger conversation. Right. <laughs> but I think it's the internet should be free now. So at what the does end this of the day, mean for games? Yeah, at the end of the day, for games, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't see the sky as falling with this case, and that's kind of where we, we definitely disagree. I know there's a lot of panic out there. You know, what does this mean? I honestly think that it's just going to be something that isn't good for games. It's, it's gonna, you know, we, we talk about it. I'm gonna let Chris weigh in because yeah. uh, I don't want to dominate the conversation here at the I start of the show. <laughs> it stifles, it stifles innovation. And that's really the core issue here. And so it's going to be very easy throughout this conversation. We'll have to try to keep each other on topic because yeah. there's a lot to unpack here. Right. And there's a lot of great channels out there that cover it. I love listening to, you know, vlog brothers about it. Philip DeFranco, I encourage you to go out and look for as much information on the left, the right. This really seems to be a nonpartisan issue. Yeah. Um, we'll, go, try to, we'll try to we'll include get, some links to some content below as well. You know, but, but basically... Up until now, there's been a regulation in place that keeps internet companies from enabling fast lanes um, as a result of a society that started to have innovation that centers around using lots and lots of bandwidth. Right. You know, streaming services come to mind. Mm -hmm. So as we use more bandwidth, it's becoming increasingly hard on internet companies. And so they've decided, you know what, it'd be great if we could charge these. And that all sounds wonderful. The problem with it is when it comes to gaming to try to keep this on subject how does that does that start to affect things like twitch does that start and amazon has to pay a fine no big deal amazon does it but that means amazon twitch can can't. afford it yeah amazon can, yeah so, right. so how does the next twitch start how do we get the next justin tv where it's just you know brian and i start our own gaming thing and we have some other gamers on there and it's our own little streaming website now we can't pay the fine so unless we have backers there can never be a competitor with twitch mm -hmm. And you'd think this is good news for Amazon and Google and stuff, but a lot of them have come out against this and said, it's not good for the little guy. Therefore, it's not good for us, even though we can afford it. Mm -hmm. So then you talk about, is my Xbox Live subscription going to go up? Um, and then we right. get it. Who where pays the for that? I think at the end of the day, the, the, the consumer, we at, will end up paying for it. The, you and, know, and I was telling Chris, is like, you know, Netflix is, is a good example because this really kind of came about because of Netflix, because I, I would venture to guess that it was due to... Uh, you know, laws and, con you know, copyright laws and things like that saying that, okay, well, we're going to have your content on the server and thus we're going to keep it protected. Typically, ISPs would literally cache the web so that they don't have to go out and pay for that. The ISP, like Verizon, and, and a lot of the conversation does center around the big guys, but there is the, the thing that I do see is there's also, we did stifle little ISPs who are going out putting these lines and doing these things in rural areas. Chris and I, you know, and I don't, and that's what I said in, in, in our private conversation was that I don't think this is necessarily going to impact gaming uh, and gamers who are in and around big cities who have choices. The, uh, you know, choice is king, but the problem is, is there's not a lot of choice out there in the market and it is a kind of catch 22. So the questions that I have, and I'd love to know you guys' thoughts on this as well is who pays for this? Like, does Microsoft on Xbox Live have to fit the you know the priority bill because is it platform, gaming right is it the publisher or is it the studio yeah and is there a way for one of those three to easily and transparently pass that along to us so that we can choose to vote whether or not 
we want to cover that because one of the things we've talked a lot about lately is, is Brian has said, even a single player game moving forward needs to have some form of online multiplayer co-op, something where you can go out and interact. The world has just become that connected. Right. And that, so, and the reason for that is another, you know, tie into we vote with our dollars is because these publishers, the big ones are, you know, are obviously easy to focus in on EA and, you know, uh, Activision. They see it. They they see who clears their single player game. They see the multiplayer game continually bringing in dollars and dollars and dollars. And I think with this, I think at the end of the day, these let's just focus on EA and Activision. You're going to see them because of this. Because let's assume that the cost is going to be on them regardless. Well, that's just the assumption we have to make okay. today. Because they they're going to they're going to reduce innovation. They're going to they're going to reduce risk. They're going to set that cost off because if they're going to have to have that multiplayer game. They're going to either sell you that multiplayer as a part of offsetting that, that cost to them. Uh, again, all the cost is always we going could to have trickle to go down. Back to so that the cost now pushes back to me. Right. Right. It's because always going to, I think, the server is really causing the problem. Gaming, I think, is no matter what in this regard is going to get more expensive. The question is, is that, you know, how expensive is it going to uh, get and adjust? Now, on the flip side is if that this brings in more competition in the ISP offerings, Maybe that offsets it. Here's the big fear that I actually have. And again, I want to communicate. I don't think people need to panic. I think they should be upset. I think we have a country in which that we can vote. And I think people should always remember that. Oh, it can come back. Right. It, it can, can always back. come back. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, you think of things in, in four year cycles, you know, and so we've got three more years with the current, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get political, but don't panic. Just remember. And that's really important. Anyway, the thing that I think is really interesting is that. And scary is what if, let's say, Microsoft partners with Verizon and says, you can play and you're not going to have these fees and you're not going to have to worry about this stuff if you're on Xbox Live and you're on Verizon. And then Sony so goes now, and says, Comcast. PUBG, uh, which is which their Xbox, because they were such a small studio, mm -hmm. Xbox is their partner when it comes to, or if Microsoft is their partner when it comes to Xbox. They didn't have Activision or EA, but, so they went straight to Microsoft. And then their PC is under their own kind of publisher. Yeah. So they're going to be fine. So PUBG is fine. But now Call of Duty isn't. And so some piece of Call of Duty's budget had to go to dealing with this. Or they had to stay on peer-to-peer, -peer, which was a huge issue we had at launch. Yeah. And that's obviously <laughs> a whole different topic with peer-to-peer -peer and dedicated. Um, you know, again... How does that fee structure work? Who pays it? Because if it's if it's yeah. based directly on the bandwidth, it has to somehow trickle down to the user. If it's just a toll, then now gaming companies have to pay it. Now Brian and I can't ever come out with our own MMO right. as a small base thing because we are under a big publisher, and publishers. Yeah. I think it, I think any developers are going to be uh, impacted by this. Everybody's going to be impacted by this. Um, the hope is my hope in the, in the whole thing is that it in encourages more investment in the internet service providing world to offer more competition but it's a 20 it's a catch 22 there's no guarantee that's going to happen people say that it will never but, seen it but there's no guarantee it could i mean when we look at uh the investment from a neutrality to now they uh the studies have shown and i you know again there's i've seen conflicting reports but the number was around 4.2 billion dollars that was not invested in this world because of that. Now, again, I want to reiterate, I think it should be a utility. In fact, I think there should be a free option. And the only way you get that is I think with government kind of have PBS, you don't almost have this, you know, line item in the in the budget for just a, a, an open option internet. But I, I don't I don't think the long term of it is actually, uh, it depends on how upset we can be. I think it, it depends on how much we remember this because if the next thing comes out and the next thing to be upset about comes out in a couple of weeks and then it's all of a sudden eight years and then all of a sudden it's 16 years and then all of a sudden just like with and my, my wife made this point with paying for your luggage at, at airports like with american airlines where now oh I, I you know bags don't fly you know southwest offers it so there's a competition option there but from american you just kind of like okay well, we got to pay to have my bags fly and that was brought in to offset the cost of fuel during a big fueling issue that has never been rolled back. But first of all, I only have one provider in my neighborhood, so right. I don't have competition. Second of all, even if I did have competition, are you telling me that now when I choose my internet provider, I have to say, oh, well, Spectrum is available in my neighborhood and they partner with Microsoft, so my right. Xbox. 
is going to run fantastic. I'm going to I'm going to have the low latency I need for first person shooters. But my PlayStation is an AT and T partner, right. so you know AT and T versus Verizon or or whatever Comcast, all these companies, and they're all merging in different ways. But now I have to go sift through all that junk. Yeah, that's the that's the fear. It's that's gonna the fear. Get my latency protected with yeah. these games or is going to allow them to patch quickly. Now it's like, oh, well, a two gig patch came out. And it's like, you're on AT&T, I'm on Verizon. My patch my patch gets throttled up and I download my patches in 15 seconds. I don't know what you're complaining about, Brian. And he's like, oh, well, my patch put me down for three days. And it's yeah. not that this will happen right away. No. They're saying that this enables them to pay for fast lanes, but how long until fast lanes become the only lanes? Right. So it's not going to change anything tomorrow. It's just... I want to be upset because if Brian is the resident optimist here on the channel, I'm going to be the <laughs> I, resident I am, optimist by the way, because yeah. somebody, somebody has to push the other way and say, if if we don't fight here, then when? Do I have to wait until my games just start sucking to say something? Um, the thing is, is that I, I would say that this fight was lost, obviously. The, the vote is out. 86% uh, of the population wanted net neutrality to stay in place the thing is is that as long as those 86 percent remember this and they vote in you know 2020 you can you things can get done um and, and that's really what it's about uh <laughs> it's it's insane and then you know that that's that goes beyond the conversation of how what this means for games because you know it, it, it's something it, it, you know you know what let us know we're in charge i know this isn't the last thing he's going to do. No. This isn't even the first thing he's done. He's already other made other changes. He's removed caps on how much they can charge businesses for, for internet. He's lifted, he's eased those up. He's, I mean, he's changed all kinds of things in the interest of the people who he's been trained to represent. He probably does sleep at night because he has conviction that defending Verizon from all of us is the right way to go. But I just don't think we're the ones hurting Verizon. I don't think so either. I, I I think the 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 thing that the word you know I talk we talk about Xbox maybe has the option to partner with and have better service on one and then PlayStation on another. That's my fear that that we, we see a world in which that happens. You see it happen in the mobile space a lot, and that and one of the big keys with that is that we also see with and this is a big part of this last week microtransactions. All that really kind of really blew up in the mobile space, and it's now trickled into our world here on console and PC gaming. And we don't like it, and it's and you're seeing a positive side with the the the, the market kicking back and being angry again. And it's, it's why just, we we're all watching CS:GO so closely. Yeah, because loot boxes and all of that. That's that's what's setting the precedents and the foundations for states that are now starting to say loot boxes being sold to minors should be legal. Yeah. So that when you see a precedent, even if it's a game you don't like, right? If you see uh, if you see one of the big mobile people, Clash of Clans partners with Verizon to make Clash of Clans data free mm -hmm. or faster right. on Verizon data plans, right. be really careful about that yeah. because they're they're picking a horse. And the moment they pick a horse, it's not a fair race anymore. Right. And that's what boils down to that Chris and I both agree. We don't think this is going to be really great for the indie developer. Although the indie developer is banking more single-player games than the big companies, I think when you look at from a risk and a cost perspective... But how do they make that jump now? If we I, make the jump, you have, make to, the jump, you have to well, have yeah. $20 million of the backing to make multiplayer or none to make single-player. I, I think... <laughs> I honestly... you. I think you, like, you made this point in our conversation offline was, honestly, I think this is what... How, how does EA offset the cost of not being able to sell loot boxes and Anthem? Or, or something like that, because you know they were planning on it. I think they go and acquire. You start, you'll start to probably see a lot of indie developers gobbled up to help offset risk. It's, I mean, it's risk management, ROI investment. This is all businessy stuff but because ROI it's a game business. Is not good for innovation. No, what not at all. They come in and they buy Brian and I's game, and they strip out any of the things that are not proven to work or are not totally complete. And they take the parts that are working, they push them to market, they clear a profit, they mm -hmm. fire Brian and I, and then they move on to the next small and team. And rinse and repeat and, and rinse and repeat. And, and, over. and, and that's why I'm so glad the Nintendo Switch is doing well. And I know this is like, now we're just getting into all, every topic. But you look at Nintendo compared to these other companies, and they're the ones who will push innovation, uh, whether it works or doesn't. And that's important. I think and typically they'll say no to this. Yeah. Typically they'll be the reason Pokemon Go doesn't pick a fast lane. Yeah be the reason that the nintendo switch doesn't pick a fast lane which is honestly uh, the weirdest thing for me to actually defend and be excited about nintendo in a while because for the longest time they, they bully us as youtubers but they do. 
the benefit <laughs> is they also bully the internet providers. And they, so and they have the capital. They have the capital. They have the capital. More power yeah, to them. They have the capital and the backing and the power to do it. So, um, you know, being the resident optimist, don't panic. I think that's the important thing. Don't let this ruin your day. No. But don't forget about it. Don't, don't forget about it. Again, I want an internet that's free and open to all. That I think that uh, that is classified as a utility. I want a better internet. I think uh, arguments out there when they say like a, a small country that's this half the size of Texas has better internet than all the United States. We're a big country. We, there's a lot of you know things that have to happen. Oh, and, I get that. You know, you know, and it's like, um, but I think also if you're in a big city like Chris and I, we're in DFW, you know, and he doesn't have any options. Hopefully, I don't need a bundle of cables to come into my house though. It can work just one. like power. Yeah. My house is hooked up to one power pole, yeah. and yet I have a choice on whose power I pay to come over that pole. Mm -hmm. So all they need to do is, and and that all gets broken out. That's a really complex process in bidding and all this. But make the complex process on their end, not on our end. You know, literally, that's, you that's should be able to you should be able to pick up the phone and be like, "My ISP sucks." Flip the switch, and then without ever doing anything else. Your so you're talking is, about speed of service calls. You're yeah. talking about who can diagnose problems faster. You're talking about who has the better rate. Um, you're, you're talking about who has an, a, a, a discount for your employer or, or whatever. Yeah. You're not talking about, oh, I only have one. Right. Well, and, and that's the reason the you only have one is because they've only run one set of lines. Rules mm -hmm. to allow for competition. No, 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 no. You need to set up the competition first. You don't, you don't you know, open up the gates and pull the gun before anybody's right. even gotten in their lanes. Right. So until you're ready to put people in lanes, there is no reason to start some race where it's just my internet provider seeing how much money they can make. Uh, my final thought on it, you know, because the reason I also say don't panic is that these kind of things take a lot of time to go into effect. I mean, immediately, I mean, you're talking that, yeah, investment might happen and they might be making moves in this regard. Businesses like to think five and 10 years out, et cetera. So if there is also like a, an idea that this might not go into effect, that this could change again in four years, you're not going to see them do a lot because there's no value in that for them. So, you know, it's important that we make our voices heard. It's important that we don't, you know, uh, panic, but it's also important we don't forget. Chris, you got any final thoughts? No, that's really it. Um, you guys can tell. I mean, I, it upsets me a little bit. Um, should. Feels like we've gotten feels like we've gotten beat up quite a bit this year uh, by <laughs> and um, it does feel like we've been and when I look up and I see that the politicians that have been voted in whether or not I was one of those votes and I see that you have people like the Verizon lawyer defending me that's just not I'm not saying he's a bad guy I'm not saying he can't be a nice person but I I am saying that if you get a room full of people and you say does anybody in here have a stereotype being the Verizon lawyer is not going to have any positive stereotypes. Um, <laughs> it's a question of, is he either, oh, he's surprisingly a really nice guy. He's surprisingly down to earth. Um, trusting that guy to defend my interest as a millennial where innovation and things like that are the core issues here. Um, most millennials are not blessed enough that the tax reform will change their life in a drastic way. Uh, it's like gas prices. People who drive under 12,000 miles a year, we get upset when gas prices go up 10 cents. But if you actually do the math, it's not very much money over the year. We just get mad for no reason. And the health plan, there's a lot of things going on with healthcare. And so without getting into policy and, and my view on politics, ultimately millennials are not super passionate about healthcare because it doesn't affect us yet outside of the ones who maybe have parents that it affects or things like that. So as a generation, we tend to be pretty quiet on the matter. This is our issue. This is what stops you and your friend from starting a business, you know, and being a small, a small creator somewhere down the line where you, you decide to start the next Netflix, the next Twitch. This is, this is the barrier that gets put in place that the longer we leave something like this in the place, the more people will go, well, it's always been that way. Why are you complaining? Right. Exactly. It just becomes complacent. Complacency is, is also, a, I think, a death of innovation in and of so, itself. That's my issue. Um, I just don't see how it turns into anything good. It may not turn into anything bad. Just don't see anything positive coming out of it. And that's, I think that's the biggest blow is that it might, bad things might not happen, but that's not a thing to rally around. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. oh, you know, things, bad things might not happen. You know, it, if, if nothing else, I don't see a lot of, a lot of good coming out of this except for 
if more competition is able to be entered in and you have more options. But it, but that's there's no guarantee of that yet. I, I'm never, I'm not seeing movement in that in that that area. I cannot it's picture a single CEO of an I, of of an ISP saying, "Great, we've been given an opportunity to have more money. Let's not put any of that in the margin." I, I just. I just don't see that. So anyway, I'll let, you, I'll let you take us out, Brian. Guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you uh, on this regards. Um, you know, it's this is a charged topic, so if you guys are leaving comments, just be respectful of everybody and their opinion, whether they agree or disagree. We want to encourage that here at Work to Game. But for Work to Game, my name's Brian. My name's Chris. Thanks so much for watching this video, and we hope to see you in our next. But until then, take care. See you next time. Chris, your shirt's pretty looking. Uh, pretty <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, it doesn't have work to game anywhere on it, but I like to support the channel. Uh, yeah. So, well, you know, uh, you can do that and also have a good looking shirt. <laughs> I don't. I don't really want that shirt. You think maybe it could be a different shirt? <laughs> well, cool. I think I'm gonna click on one of the links somewhere around here, and I'm gonna go see what we got. Hello. <laughs> it's really, really. Really good. <laughs> you guys have a great day. Take care. You probably have a pretty shirt on.